Thank you very much. Good uh, afternoon. Um, I thank the co-conveners of this session for giving me the opportunity to talk to you about women's empowerment in World Farm Food Security and, about, and to give you some, thought, some thought for, uh, food for thought on um, indicators in that respect. Um, what are indicators? Indicators are criteria and measures, I see a mistake there, against which we can assess changes. So they are used to signify changes in specific conditions or progress towards a particular objective. So before we can talk about indicators, we have to know what we want with them. And in order to outline that, I would um, like to structure my, um, strategy, my uh, presentation around what is the Women for Water Partnership and what are the conditions that we would like to change as Women for Water and the objectives that we, uh, that we want to achieve. And then I would like to um, relate that to the gender strategy in the water sector of MCAL and then talk about what is the specific niche that the Women for Water Partnership uh, is in that has in that strategy. I will skip the examples of the African uh, members because some very good examples have been given in the previous presentation and we are pressed for time. Um, but the real issue that we want to talk about is indicators to measure these women empowerment strategies and that is quite a challenge, I feel. Um, who we are, who is the Women for Water Partnership? We are a global women's civil society network, and I would like to stress the civil society in that. We have uh, 24 member organizations, uh, many of which are networks, international and local networks in themselves, and that's why we cover 90 countries of the world, of which 68 are uh, development assistant countries. So actually we are the women's major group of Agenda 21. So we unite the women's organizations around the topics of water and sanitation for all. I'm already going through my slides quickly, so I have to move on. Um, why did we do that? Because, now let me first tell you what women's major group is. Um, we have a diverse array of social structures in which women have organized themselves. Women water professionals, lawyers, scientists, rural women, grassroots women, the whole lot. And all these different civil society structures are united in the Women for Water Partnership to jointly um, achieve women's empowerment in water and sanitation, whereby we consider water key to development. So it's actually the center of the nexus. That's the connection to food security, energy. All these things are interconnected. There are two aspects to that, because water and women's empowerment, they are mutually supportive. On the one hand, water empowers women. We have already heard the examples for that. So if you have water access, you don't uh, have to walk so much, but you, don't, you have more time for economic activities. All of that is true. But more important is that we have many uh, examples that having a role in water and sanitation provision gives women a voice. It strengthens them. And they see that they can achieve things together as a group. And so they become an equal party in the community. And that brings us to the very important bit that empowered women, they can become in that way effective agents of change. So if we relate that to the international policy arena, you. Um, see the Dublin principles for integrated water management clearly outline these aspects. The participatory approach and the central pivotal role of women in the provision management and safeguarding of water. How can you do that without having empowered, able women's organizations? Um, it is outlined in the um, um, policies and strategies and in the agreements that women play that role. But in effect, how much are women supported as the effective agents of change that they can be? Is there truly an enabling environment for the action of the women in the water sector? Well, I would say there is room for some improvement there. So let me relate that to the MCAL gender strategy. How can this MCAL gender strategy help in that respect? There are four aspects to the strategy. 
institutional strengthening for gender mainstreaming and strengthening partnership, and two more, but I would like to emphasize the first two, the institutional mechanisms and the strengthening of a partnerships approach. Um, the MCOS strategy really gives due consideration to uh, the institutional mechanism, and we have heard that before in the previous uh, uh, presentations. Um, but while the legal and policy frameworks are largely in place, I'm not only talking about the MCAS strategy, but in general, if you look at the Beijing Platform for Action in 1995, uh, since then, a lot of emphasis has been put on the legal frameworks, on the policy frameworks. At the national level and at the international level, a lot has been done towards uh, institutional mechanisms. They are all in place. I do not want to go into that because uh, it's not the scope of my presentation. But I would like to emphasize that there is a hole in the bucket. Um, while the top-down, the governmental process, has very much taken its course, so we have the institutional mechanisms, we have the legal frameworks, little attention has been given to the equally important bottom-up processes in society. As a consequence, the enabling environment that also Rosemary Ropp was talking about for the implementations of all those policies and strategies that we have is poorly developed. The mechanisms for raising awareness, sensitizing society, pushing for change, making it really happen on the ground, they are only marginally in place, we feel. Let's go back to the MCA water strategy. Um, on page 17, you might not have it handy, but I will quote it for you. It says, when looking at the historical framework of gender, it says, women were passive recipients of benefits. Their multiple roles in development, and you know the multiple roles have been outlined in Agenda 21 in the Dublin Principles for Integrated Water Resources Management, the role of women in water and sanitation, they have been reiterated and reconfirmed in Rio Plus 20. But those multiple roles in development have not been considered for a very long time. Only recently, a gender and empowerment approach has been attempted to transform existing gender relations by stressing women's self-empowerment. And this is actually the niche that we see as the Women for Water Partnership. This is actually why Women for Water Partnership came about after the Johannesburg uh, Summit on Sustainable Development. We strengthen and facilitate women's organizations that are active or that want to become active in the water and development arena. And we position them as active and empowered partners at the lowest appropriate level. And if we then go back to what Phoebe said, this is actually the strategic objective three of the strategy. Now, that is all very well. Back to the question I put earlier, who is investing in really um, uh, strengthening this process? If you look at the, the white um, analysis of the, the gender budget, of the development budget, then you can see, they did it a couple of years ago, that less than 1% of the total development budget goes to women's organizations themselves. I mean, there is something more done about a capacity building, gender strategies. This all goes to institutions that work for women, where the women are the beneficiaries. But if you look at the women's major group, what they get themselves, it's less than 1% of the total budget. So maybe there's some room for improvement there. And this brings me to a first basic and indicator from the perspective of the women's organizations. How much money really goes into women's organizations in the water sector so that they, bottom up, can strengthen all the uh, top down um, things that are already happening. Because if bottom up and top down do not meet, all the effort goes to vain, you feel. Of course, it is very easy to, to, to mention an indicator that other people have already um, said. And for the Women for Water Partnership, it's, it's not enough, because if you have this um, women's empowerment by giving them the means to actually act out their roles, still you have to show that they make a difference, that it really works, that 
using women's role in uh, watch and sanitation really helps to develop the communities. So how do you do that? We have been grappling with that a lot. Um, again, the examples already shown by Rosemary and other people, I don't want to go into that, but just state that empowerment of women is a process. It's a long-term process. Transforming a society through water and sanitation provision also is a long-term process, a dynamic process. And there is no one solution fits all. It's very tailor-made, in fact. We have many success stories. We have numerous best practices. But each story is different. And they are narrative data. Each time when you come to showing the result, people say, yeah, but this is an incident. It's narrative data. So more, when it comes to indicators and comparing and quantifying these results, very often that is not possible. So at, as Women for the Partnership grappling with that, we look not at the project side of it, but at the outcome side, at the impact side of that. And you should not measure how it's been done, but what is the result? Let me give you an example, which is maybe making it less abstract. Uh, we had a small grants program which was on communication. So member organizations, if they want to increase and enhance their communication possibilities, they can have a small grant. And then one of the uh, member organizations in Tanzania came up and they said, we want a motorcycle. And then, of course, if to a regular donor you say, I, I have a communication grant and I want a motorcycle, they will say, no, 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 communication is about maybe a computer or other things, but it's not about a motorcycle. But if you are in a very high up remote village in uh, the Para Mountains, where there is no public transport, and the district that decides on your water provisions is very far away, you need a motorcycle to communicate. So we decided that what we should measure is have they reached the district? Has the district responded? Did they get a say in the development of the water uh, situation in their village? Then they are worth their money. And that's the indicator that you have to measure. Not whether they used a motorcycle or they went the other mile. That's not so important. Now, the challenge is, which I put before you as well, how do we go from narrative data to quantitatively assessing the impact of our inter interventions on people's lives, because that's really what matters. If it was too quick, I can repeat it, because it was quite a sentence. But that's important, measuring impact on people's lives. And how can we do that in a way that is quantitatively accessible? We have shopped around a bit, and we found that such technology to quantify narrative data actually exists in the form of quite accessible software packages that you can purchase. And this system is based on a multivariate analysis of a number of parameters. Um, the, the crux of the matter is, of course, to develop the questions that you then ask all those people and that really identify the impact of what you have done. Um, basically, in the a system that we, I, I'm not going to name any names because I think that's not, not the idea, but the people that we approached, they said you have to define 15 key questions. And then next you scale the response to that question on a scale from one to 10. So for instance, if you say, has this source of water really changed your, um, improved your livelihood or does, has it made you more healthy? These type of questions you can ask to people. And then you can ask them to say whether they totally disagree more or less agree, totally agree. This is something that everybody can do. You can even measure it in colors. You can say to children, this is a very bright yellow, this is very, very faint. You point your finger how you feel about this question. If you do these sorts of data uh, collection on a large scale, and you can do that through the computers, just ask the question, punch it in, attach the narrative data to it, then it's analyzed through this uh, multivariate analysis, and you get an impact result. It is culture independent. It is place independent. The crux is ask the right questions. Um, this is actually what I want to put before you. Is this a way of, I'm, I'm done because this is the way, this is my question. Is this a way of really 
assessing, having an indicator that is not so very time consuming, not so very expensive, that cuts, cuts across gender because you can ask women, children, everybody. You can ask whether you're in a rural area or someplace else. Once you put all this in a sort of system, you can analyze. Uh, we as Women for Water Partnership think we can do it because we have this huge constituency. We are in all those countries of the world, and so we would very much be willing to be the pilot um, organization to test this out. Um, I conclude with saying that um, I really think that apart from gender mainstreaming, a key success factor for the MCA strategy is to involve the major group of women. Thank you very much. <laughs>